Hi everyone, welcome back. This is Tuplex. Uh, and today, as I mentioned before, we're going to start adding modules to our oil production. And we have two objectives there. Uh, one is to speed up the production so that we can get more output because as we've seen, even with plenty of oil coming in and everything running nonstop, uh, we're still using all the petroleum that we're producing and not making enough plastic. Uh, if we go over and look at our plastic chemical plants, uh, especially these ones on the end, well, that one's not too bad. Let's check these. Those are all running. Yeah, this one here is waiting for petroleum. This one is waiting for petroleum. This one is waiting for petroleum. Right, so they, uh, they're not running at full speed because they're not getting enough petroleum gas. Um, everything else looks pretty good. We've got plenty of lubricant, we've got plenty of sulfuric acid, but um, plastic production is too slow and that's preventing us from making all the red circuits that we could be, as you can see. So what we're going to do is we are going to add productivity modules to all of our refineries uh, to begin with, and we'll eventually hit everything here, but we'll start with the refineries and we're going to add productivity modules. Now these each hold three modules. Um, and we can see that the refinery has a crafting speed of one. Now the productivity module has a speed penalty of minus 15% each. And it gives us a 4% productivity boost. Okay, so if I, uh, if I control left click, that'll automatically load all three modules. So we can see now that I have a productivity of plus 12%, which is good. So that means that, you know, when this purple bar fills up, I'll get uh, extra oil and petroleum out of here for free. Uh, so we'll produce 12% more fluids, uh, which will allow us to use less crude oil to get the same amount of output. Um, but as you can see, our uh, electrical consumption has more than doubled. We're using 120% of the normal electric electricity. So this refinery is using 924 kilowatts versus 420 on this one with no modules. Uh, so that is a pretty significant penalty. And uh, you can see that the crafting speed now is 0.55 instead of one. So our speed has dropped by almost half. All right, that's pretty bad. Um, so the productivity comes at a cost. Now, what we can do to offset the loss of productivity or the loss of speed is to add beacons. All right, now in this case, I can hit three refineries with one beacon here. And I'm gonna add two speed modules to the beacon. All right, so um, the level one speed modules give me a 20% speed boost on each one. Um, now the issue with beacons is that they only transmit half of the effect of the modules. So we have two speed modules in here, um, whereas if we put these directly in a machine, we would be getting plus 40%, but since we're putting them in a beacon, we're only transmitting half of the effect. So it's like getting the effect of one of those modules uh, to these machines. So we're gonna get a 20% speed boost which you can see if you hover over the beacon. Um, now that needs power, of course, so let's power it up. Okay, so now we can see that the crafting speed on this machine is 0.75, right? Which is better than it was before, uh, but it's still not as fast as we want it to be. So let's add another beacon. And now we're up to 0.95 with our 12% bonus uh, in productivity, that's gonna, in effect, give us more output per second or per minute than we would have had previously, okay? Um, and this is 0.95 now because this machine is in range of, of two beacons instead of just one. So uh, we're now getting 40% increase. 
All right, so this gets, gets us back almost to our original speed, plus we're getting a 12% productivity bonus. And if we do this all the way up and down the line, then we should get, uh, we should get more output. All right, so let's go ahead and add these modules to all the rest of our refineries. And then I will blueprint this little thing here. And we'll tile this all up and down the line. And this is why I left the space when we were putting this together, uh, because I wanted to be able to add these uh, beacons to our setup. Okay, and bots will add beacons as well. Um, now here I have a little bit of an issue because of this pipe. So I wonder if I can relocate that, and I think I can. Well, let me put the beacons here and then we'll figure out where we can put the pipe. Let's see, what if I do this? Yeah, that ought to work. We have to be careful we don't mix our fluids anywhere. But yeah, that'll that'll work fine. Okay. Um, and now we can see that, look, this one on the end has a speed of 0.95 because it's only being affected by two beacons. But all the ones that are in the middle uh, this has 1.15 crafting speed now because this one is being affected by three beacons. And you can see which machines the beacons are impacting by hovering over them. And the machines that are highlighted inside the white square are being affected by that beacon. Okay, so all of these machines, except for the two on the ends, have a crafting speed of 1.15, which is faster than it was before. And we're getting a 12% productivity boost, which is fantastic. Now let's look at our power consumption. Uh, we're now consuming six megawatts on the refineries and almost four megawatts just from the beacons. So these are very power hungry. And that's why I mentioned that I wanna start building up to nuclear power as soon as we start doing this. Okay, now the output put on some of these are blocked and that's because I'm missing a pipe there. I think that should fix it. Yeah. Okay, good. So if we press P and go to our production, uh, let's look at one minute production on fluids. Uh, so let's look at petroleum gas. Um, all right, let's go to a longer or maybe a shorter period. All right, it's hard to see the increase because of the, uh, the up and down <laughs> nature. Um, we only get an output every cycle, so that makes the graph hard to see for short time periods. Um, but what we can do is we can, here what we could do is we could look at our plastic output and if we see, yeah, we can see a noticeable increase in our plastic output compared to a minute or so ago. All right, so. Uh, so that's helping. Now the other thing that we can notice is that our light oil in particular is starting to accumulate uh, because now we don't have enough machines cracking or the machines cracking are now not enough to handle the increased output of oil from here. Okay, so we need to do essentially the same thing over here with our cracking machines. Okay, and we need to get these back up to 1.25. Uh, so again, if we can get if we can get enough beacons, uh, let's try it this way. I'm not sure if we're going to need to put one in front of every machine or not. Yeah, this one in the middle is still is still slowed down. So let's try putting one there as well. 
All right. Yeah, so now this is faster than the 1.25 that it begins with. And that should be moved directly across. Okay, so we'll repeat this pattern up and down the line. Now the heavy oil cracking, I don't know if we're going to need to beacon that one because we're also making lubricant from the heavy oil. So. Uh, it might not be necessary. But we are getting the productivity bonus from everything. Okay. So petroleum is still emptying as fast as we can produce. So the next thing I'd like to do is add beacons to our plastics machines. Uh, and let's check our power again. Uh, again, we have to be careful once we start adding beacons to everything because our, our power consumption is going to increase astronomically. Okay, so again, we need to, we need to get these boosted up to at least above the 1.25 crafting speed that they began with. We're pretty close to it because, again, we are getting a productivity increase as well. Um, so let's start with, I put a beacon there and a beacon there. Yeah, I've got 1.1875 here in the middle. And we're 25% slower on the ends, 5% slower. So I think we're going to need to put a couple more beacons. Um, and I've trapped myself. <clears throat> so let's put uh, let's put another beacon on the end here. And let me try something here. Um, one thing you want to do is you want to try to hit as many machines with your beacons as possible so that you get the most effect. So here you can see if I move it just one tile closer then I can hit four machines with this beacon instead of only two. So that's uh, definitely something you want to try to do. Without that, yeah, we're a little bit slow, so. All right, so now we're getting some good output here. Let's try Moving this as well. Oh no, that's the wrong way. There we go. And I'm going to relocate this over there. beacon there. Okay, so now we've got a big boost in plastic, both in terms of speed and productivity. Um, uh, at least on these these machines in the center. Yeah, see now these two are getting more of a boost than these two because this one is still not close enough. Uh, but there's nothing I can do about that. I can't get this any closer because I need these underground belts. Whereas here I only needed one. Yeah, so the only other solution would be to put beacons on the outside. But I prefer to do them in the, in the middle, uh, at least to begin with, because I can hit more machines that way. Um... Yeah, so I've got four beacons. Let's take a look at our output. 
All right, so now we're making 715 a minute. Uh, looks like a few minutes ago we were down, I don't know, maybe around 650. Um, the more important thing, of course, is to see if we're getting plastic to all of our red circuit machines. Uh, it is a little bit better now. Still not as good as it could be, I don't think. Yeah, these machines here are still not getting enough petroleum. So our belt's getting loaded more on one side than the other because the petroleum's not being evenly distributed. Um, we could probably fix that problem by bringing the pipe here in the center so we have an equal length path on both ends. Um, but this side is also pulling into sulfur production, so uh, it's not surprising that we have a problem with these machines uh, more so than these. Uh, but for sure we're getting more output than we were before. Um, but they're, they're still not all working. And it looks like we're still not getting quite enough plastic to keep all of this running. Uh, let's take a look at our red circuit production. Okay. Yeah, so if we look at the graph for the last hour for red circuits, uh, you know, we're definitely we're definitely getting more red circuits than we were before. I, I think still perhaps not as much as I would like, um, but it's definitely more than before. Let's take a look at our science. Okay, yeah, so science production now has full belts of red circuits where those are needed. Uh, so we've at least got enough to keep our science going at full speed. Um, perhaps not quite enough to make modules and so on as fast as we want, but uh, this is a good start. So, uh, I think that's enough on that. Yeah, we can see that our sulfuric acid tank is now full. Uh, lubricant tank is getting full, so the, uh, the boost that we got over here is definitely helping us out. Okay, um, and we'll have to keep an eye on this light oil tank. Uh, we can see that this is Looks like it's still generally increasing. So we may have to add a little bit more cracking now that we have the modules here. Um, we might be getting more light oil than, than we have cracking set up to handle. So if necessary, we can add a few more chemical plants to do some more cracking. That'll give us uh, even more petroleum. In fact, why don't we just go ahead and do that now? I'll add two more machines. put them down here or do I want to put them down here now if I put them over here then I'll be able to use the same set of modules and in that case let's do them here so we get hit by more beacons okay and we'll load those with modules um, the plumbing could be a little bit tricky see here. Can we do that? Yep, that's good. All right, so that'll get us the light oil. All right, so, so again, we're getting, we're adding two more machines into the effect of these beacons just by placing them uh, in, a, in a place where the beacons that we already have can reach them. Uh, so that's a good way to, to be efficient with your beacon usage. Uh, where can we tap into some water? I think we could do 
do that right here. There we go. Let's give this some power. Actually, can we do it with this? Yeah, we can. Okay. And then we're using the top side for our outputs. do in this case is we can just connect to this pipe back here. There. Okay, so that gives us a little extra cracking and we should start to see the light oil decrease. Yeah, which it is. So this will uh, this will keep the keep us cracking all the light oil so it doesn't accumulate and that'll give us a little bit extra petroleum which in turn will give us more plastic. Yeah, so we can see now. Yeah, th th that was, that could have been just exactly what we needed. These machines are all starting to pick up now. Let's take a look at our plastic production graph again. Yeah, we can see we're getting another little boost in production on plastic, so that's perfect. Okay. So, uh, I think we spent enough time on that. Let us start to make the stuff that we need for nuclear reactors. Let's see, one. So we'll set up a few machines here. Now for nuclear power, uh, we need uh, a number of things. We need the reactors, first of all, which consume a huge amount of resource, as you can see. Um, 500 concrete, steel, 500 red circuits, 500 copper plates. Um, heat exchangers we need. Um, those are going to be steel, copper, and pipe. Heat pipes are steel and copper. Um, and then we also need the turbines, which are gears, copper, and pipe. All right, so we're done with mining productivity uh, for now. Let's see, lab research. All right, let's start working on Covarex enrichment. Uh, this will allow us to make more uranium-235, uh, which is good. Uh, we can also make nuclear fuel for our trains, which could be fun. I haven't tried that yet, but uh, that'll be interesting to get into. But we'll start doing this research. This is going to take a while. Um, you need 40 uranium-235 to do one cycle of Covarex enrichment. And that's why I wanted to start this uranium processing. Uh, where is it? Over here. That's why I wanted to start this early so that we could uh, start to accumulate it. And we have 47 pieces now. So we're definitely ready to start that process um, as soon as we get the research done. So that's uh, good timing. Um, we're going to be using a lot of copper here. So I think, I think it would be a good idea for us to bring a full red belt of copper down there. So let me start by doing that. No, I guess yeah, we can do this. other belts as well. Okay, so we don't need any intermediate products here. Heat exchangers do need pipes. 
and heat pipes just need steel and copper. So let's do let's do the reactor there. Let's do the heat pipes here. That needs to be moved over one more. Here we can do the heat exchangers. Those are going to require pipes, which we can make here. Uh, where are the pipes? There we go. All right, so let's start setting these up. Now, in terms of quantities, uh, let me... Where's my blueprint book? Here we go. This is my blueprint book for reactors. So we're going to start with this. Uh, we're going to start with this two reactor setup that'll give us 160 megawatts, and then we can gradually scale it up from there. Uh, this is the same set of blueprints that I used in my real real world marathon base. Um, it scales up to 10 reactors, uh, 1.4 gigawatts. Um, so this is what we'll use, and then once we get up to 10 reactors, when we need more power, we'll just we'll start again and uh, make another 10 reactor unit like this one. So, um, but what I like about this blueprint book is that you can start with two, and then when you're ready for more power, you add two more reactors, more turbines, more heat exchangers, uh, and you can scale it up fairly easily. So we'll start with the 160 megawatt version. Uh, let's take a look at that one. So that needs two reactors, obviously, uh, 16 heat exchangers, 28 turbines, and 38 heat pipes. Okay, so we'll start our production to build up those quantities. All right, now the steam turbines need copper. Those also need pipes. Okay, so let's... Let's make this the heat exchanger then, and we'll make this the pipes. And then we'll do, uh, let's see, I need assembly machines. And then we can do the, uh, we can do the turbines here since those also need pipes and that way this this machine making the pipes can be shared between the two all right uh, so let's get more power for that guy and some over here yeah that needs quite a lot of copper plate these all these all need quite a lot of copper plate as you can see all right, so I'm gonna run the copper line down the center uh, to keep things simple rather than cutting through. I'll just do that little piece of trickery. Um, this doesn't need circuits. Actually, none of these need circuits except for this one, uh, but we can grab circuits that way. Um, we might as well use stack inserters for the copper plates. Okay, and then... The other half we can bring in over here. Okay, now this one also requires gears. So let's bring down our other belt of gears, if we can. All right, that's giving us a problem, but that's easy enough to fix.
and that needs 50 gears, so we might as well give that a stack inserter as well. <coughs> Let's uh, put a few lights in here. Okay, so this one has what we need. Um, and again, we need 28 of these. And we need another RoboPort down here. Uh, so let's do that. Um, speaking of power, be careful when you add RoboPorts as well, um, because when you first put a RoboPort in place, you can see it charging. Uh, when it charges, it pulls in 5 megawatts, I believe. Um, so if you put in, if you start throwing down lots of RoboPorts all at once, uh, you will run out of power very quickly. Okay, so that's in the network now. All right, a yellow inserter on the output will be fine, and we need 28 of these. So I'm just gonna set this up so that we only get the amount that we need for our initial blueprint. Okay, so we need 28 of those. We need 16 heat exchangers. So we'll set this to give us 16 um, and we also need steel ah, we can get it from here all right uh, heat pipes also require steel and I didn't really leave myself any room for that did I no that's okay we can Run it down this way. Um, I guess it'll probably also pull in some copper from there as well. But that's not a problem. All right, heat exchange or er, uh, heat pipes. We need thirty-eight. So we'll set this to run as long as we have fewer than 38 heat pipes. And then the reactors, uh, to begin with, we only want two. Um, and this one also needs steel and concrete. A lot of steel. So let's put another one there. And then we'll put a requester chest here for the concrete. And we'll use a stack inserter for that. How many do we need? 500. All right, so we'll put a request here for 500 concrete. Okay, and if you hover over a requester chest, uh, you can see where it says filters 500 concrete. That means that's what it's requesting. And deliver says 500. That number will start to decrease as the concrete gets delivered to the chest. So there you can just see what is pending to be brought to the chest. Um, and also you might have noticed when hovering over here, you can see that some of the bots are highlighted in green. Those are the bots that are involved in satisfying the request on that chest. Okay, so uh, that will give us everything that we need to 
well, almost everything that we need to put our first uh, nuclear reactor together. Um, there are a few other items that we'll have to take care of, but those are uh, relatively easy to make in comparison to all this other stuff. So uh, we'll get into that in the next episode. Thanks again for watching. Uh, as always, if you liked the video, uh, please consider hitting the like button. Uh, I have blue belts on here for some reason. I don't know why, what is going on here. Uh, I've messed up. Ah. <laughs> that should not be outputting there. Okay, well, that's going to take me some time to clean up. Filter inserter, blue belts. Okay, I'll get them off the belt when they arrive over here. Put those in there. Okay, so... As I was saying, uh, if you like the video, please hit like. If you want to see more, hit subscribe. Uh, we're getting very close to 500 subscribers, uh, which is a nice milestone. So I appreciate all your support, your comments especially. So keep those coming as well. And I will see you next time. Thanks again. Bye-bye.